Well, let's listen for God's word to us in our second reading, which is a second Old Testament reading. We're going back to the prophet Jeremiah, and we'll be reading chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So Jeremiah says, I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he had made was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as the potter has done, says the Lord, just like the clay in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck it up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I had intended to bring on it. And I, in another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build that and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, for your Eve from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Do you recognize times when God's inviting you or inviting their community down to the potter's shed for instruction to give us instructions to and give us life lessons would we or could we even recognize that god did that are we even prepared to hear god what god might have in mind for us these are challenging questions and hard questions to answer. Hard to answer because it can be our human condition to think we know how it's supposed to be, the way things belong, the way things are supposed to be. And perhaps it's part of our inherent human condition to be less than flexible when it comes to change, not to see the need or not want God's message that might imply change. We are quite comfortable where we are. Thank you, just the same. I have a great memory from my OSU campus days that I think demonstrates this idea of having a well-established way of the things belong. As I have mentioned before, I used to teach an evening class on teaching and engineering, just one night a week for three hours. One of the things I like to do was to rearrange the tables in the room into a more semicircular format. We did a lot of discussion in this class, and I think it helped people if they could see each other more readily as we did discussions. We usually took a environmental break about halfway through the class. And one evening, a new building janitor pulled me aside at the break time within easy earshot of the students to in no uncertain terms let me know that if i was going to move tables from where they belonged they must be returned to the correct positions before i left that evening or and here's the real threat he would be forced to report me to the department chair <laughs> i i didn't have the heart to tell him i was the department chair but I must admit, we, I, with the students' help, put the tables back the way they were supposed to be before leaving, as we'd done earlier weeks as well. 
But we still move them every week. A rebellious lot we were. Our second reading today, the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah tells his story of God speaking to him. God said to him, son, up on your feet, go to the potter's house, and when you get there, I'll tell you what I have to say. Well, I think like any of us would upon hearing God's direct instruction, Jeremiah did as he was told. He went and he observed. Went to the potter's house and sure enough, the potter was there working away at his wheel. What he observed was that whenever the pot the potter was making turned out badly, as sometimes happened when you're working with clay, the potter would simply start over and use that same clay to make another pot more to his liking. But what was the real message from God? Well, in true Old Testament language, Jeremiah interprets God's decree directly. According to Jeremiah, God is saying, I work on you, people of Israel. At any moment, I may decide to pull up a people or a country by the roots and get rid of them. But if they repent of their wicked lives, I will think twice and start over with them. At another time, I might decide to plant a people or a country, but if they don't cooperate and won't listen to me, I will think again and give up the plan on the plans I had for them. Jeremiah is told directly by God, so tell the people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem this message, danger, I'm shape, shaping doom against you laying plans against you. Turn back from your doomed way of life, straighten out your lives. Now there's nothing like an Old Testament prophet to bring the images and the words of the fear of the Lord to us. Thanks be to God for the love of the New Testament. But it does make it me at least curious about the question of the potter's shed and God's speaking. What does it mean for us today? In particular, given the last two and a half years of this forced separation we've had experienced from our communal place of worship and our ways of being community and ways we, we meet and try and serve ourselves in the world around us. What does this mean today? Pre-COVID, we had a pretty well-established potter's shed and a smooth running pottery op making operation. We were accustomed to gathering in this sacred place for worship, being led in song by choir and favorite hymns, being led in prayer using comforting familiar words, hearing a spoken word from the pastor. Now we are a patient people Throughout the years, we patiently have waited to hear a word from the Lord in the place where we felt God had spoken before and would speak again. So when COVID hit, when public health and safety measures forced us from our sanctuary and our ingrained behaviors, we, like others, were forced to contend with some very straightforward facts. Facts like we have become content with depending not only on the voice of God, but depending on hearing God in our customary location, in our customary way, our expected context. I think the COVID experience, in the COVID experience, God has spoken to us. Perhaps God is trying to show us a modern day potter's shed. <clears throat> I would contend now after two plus years, we are in a time of global kind of fascination with what it means to return to normal. Some, only some might even admit that it will be a new normal. Some would say, no, we're not really ready for a normal yet. It, in this turbulent time, this text from Jeremiah is both reminder and encouragement. First, a reminder must be God 
speaks. God is speaking, it is happening. God speaking happens when God chooses to speak and through whatever means God chooses to speak and through whatever means God desires. God, after all, is God. Think about the context of this text where God speaks to Jeremiah. There's nothing markedly sacred about a potter's shed. The potter was an artisan whose craft was for common use. Everyone would want and need pottery. Nothing too exciting about every day at the potter's shed. Yet it is the potter in his dull, dusty, clay-filled workshop working away on his wheel whom God uses as the entry point for God's revelation to emerge through the prophet Jeremiah. Given this story, we can be open to the idea that there is truly no place, no person, no situation, no means through which God is unable to speak. Can we envision that God declares to things to be holy ground when God so chooses, made so by God? This can be challenging, can be hard for us to accept. How do we accept that the, the ball field or the backyard or the grocery store or the computer screen, to us if we consider it, it all is potential holy ground from which God can speak. How would our private conversations with loved ones or playtime with children, time caring for others, or even difficult conversations with friends and foes on Zoom change if we were open to God's presence in these moments. Furthermore, we can reactivate the kind of childlike openness and wonder that sees messages in clouds and gains prophetic insight in places other than sanctuaries from people who aren't necessarily wearing any holy garments. Can we listen to hear God speaking? Such questions require us to loosen our grip on our traditional distinction between sacred and secular, loosening our grip on the way it should be. The questions also call for us to be willing to hear God on God's terms. They call us to active engagement, but perhaps in new and different ways. These questions and changes do not give us license to fall away from God or our commitment to love God and neighbor. They do not give us permission to ignore God because the format of our sanctuary or our meetings together has changed. Perhaps just the opposite. We are called to listen to God and doing what God calls even more. In expression of worship and love of God, we can and should and will continue to commit to gathering in recognized communal spaces. Gather for, gathering for worship is, is fundamental, even if how we do it is not conventional and may change and be different. Even if the communal space has the tables rearranged. Even if the communal space looks and feels very different with its virtual elements. Just as before, we will strain our ears and hearts to hear that the ancient of days has to say in our current situation. We will still sing songs and pray the Psalms with remind us of our con continuation in our complex complications of our faith. All of this is the only thing that includes right worship. One of the ways we listen to God through our right worship. And when it comes to the second commandment, we can and should and will continue to be committed to love neighbors as ourselves. Even if it means we have to express that love with the tables rearranged. Even if our table rearrangement in our response, we see God's grace. We will need to bring forth our best efforts. 
We can prayerfully work as a community to identify and to enact our roles in this changed world. We can still do our dinners and have our auctions, but also think creative, creatively about even more, or in some cases, different tables altogether. Sure, in this mix of old and new found expressions of our love, we need to be prepared to be asked why. Why are we leaving things behind? Asked why our tables are not where they're supposed to be. We can surely ask ourselves that and answer that question. And while listening to God, answer to the questions of what is God's will. We can answer those well. I doubt it was Jeremiah's normal path to go observe the potter. We may pray to hear God call us by name and go observe and hear. Call us somewhere less familiar, perhaps, to leave our nooks and nesting places for a place where we can receive the sort of insight that can only be experienced when we let go of our comfort and truly respond to God. When we do, I pray that we will say, Lord, have it thine own way, that we can admit Thou art the potter, I am the clay, that we ask to be filled with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only, always living in me. May it be so. Amen.